Yeah. We have to understand what is causing the insulin resistance. And so I'll just talk about that because it kind of wraps back to seed oils. And I'm sorry this has been so, so technical and such a long story, but it's a, it's a big Gordian knot, all of this. So I mentioned this earlier, metabolic dysfunction, insulin resistance, this primarily happens at the level of the mitochondria. If you cannot take substrate from food, which is glucose or fatty acids, and process them into NIDH and FADH2 and move those electrons through the electron transport chain to make ATP, you are going to become insulin resistant. So how does that get broken? It gets broken in two major ways. The first of these is seed oils and the second of those is sugar. And I'll talk about sugar in a minute next. Seed oils, I think, are a problem at the level of the mitochondria because that linoleic acid is the most common, most abundant polyunsaturated fat that we consume today as westernized Americans. And that linoleic acid accumulates in the membranes of the mitochondria. And there's evidence from animal models and cell culture that when you have excess linoleic acid from seed oils in the mitochondrial membrane, you get proton leak. And if you're, the whole point of the electron transport chain is to create a gradient that the protons can flow down to make ATP. If you are leaking protons across down the gradient, you are making less ATP. At the cellular membrane, we also know that excess linoleic acid, excess polyunsaturated fats, creates leak and problems or overactivation of the sodium potassium ATPase. That's all very technical, but suffice it to say that my concern is that when you stuff yourself full of seed oils, you are creating an ATP leak in your body. You are not producing energy as well and that leads to metabolic dysfunction. And that is actually the root molecular cause. What's the solution? Stop eating so much linoleic acid. Return to a historically accurate, a historically consistent amount of fat. We're doing these historically inappropriate things, right? We're doing historically inappropriate lights. We're doing historically inappropriate types of fat. Humans are meant to be eating a mix of saturated fat and monounsaturated fat with a little bit of polyunsaturated fats. We have far too much polyunsaturated fat today, and I think that's driving, at a molecular level, the mitochondrial dysfunction that is underlying insulin resistance and metabolic dysfunction. So the solution is simple. Return to what you've always been doing. Remember that seed oils also increase the propensity of LDL to oxidize when it gets in that arterial wall. So in so many ways, this historically horrible industrial processed oil full of hexane, benzene derivatives, oxidized oils, antimony from the plastic it's being stored in that humans have never been exposed to, which is being sold to you as safe and healthy by Harvard and Mayo because it lowers your cholesterol based on a faulty paradigm of atherosclerosis is a major, major driver of illness in humans today. Wow. So that's the seed oil story. I'm sorry that was wow. so long. Wow. You were going to go into sugars. Yeah, so the second thing is sugar. The sugar drives metabolic dysfunction also, but not in the way that we think it does. So this is another interesting story. Sucrose is a disaccharide of glucose and fructose. Glucose and fructose are monosaccharides. Sucrose is a disaccharide. Starches are polymers of glucose. When you have a fruit, an apple, I gave you guys strawberries downstairs, right? That has glucose and fructose in it. It has sucrose and it has some of both of those sugars. That, if I give you a strawberry, that doesn't cause insulin resistance in humans. That's pretty clear, both at an associational or an interventional level. If I give you pure sugar, which is pure sucrose that's been refined out of that strawberry, or from sugar cane, or from beets, or I give you high fructose corn syrup, which is a, another industrial byproduct from corn, where they take corn, which only has glucose, and they isomerize it, and they combine it to make a high fructose corn syrup, which is essentially like a fake sugar, if I give you either of those things, it does induce insulin resistance in humans. It's not because it raises your blood sugar, it's because it affects your gut microbiome negatively. So historically, humans would never have consumed sugar without all of the other compounds in that strawberry. So that strawberry is a complex food. It's not just sugar, it's red, it has, it tastes, right? There are thousands of components in that strawberry hundreds of different chemicals in that strawberry that your body is used to getting with that sugar. And whether it's strawberry or banana or orange or honey, any of these sugar-containing foods that humans have historically consumed, these compounds prevent the overgrowth of bacteria in our gut. But if you give a human pure sugar, you get dysbiosis. That is a strict, fast pathway to dysbiosis. If you want to, if you want to mess up the gut flora, give a human sugar. It doesn't matter if it's high fructose corn syrup or pure sucrose. It doesn't look like it's good for humans. But if you give a human a banana, it's fine. 
or even, even like orange juice. It doesn't even have to have fiber because orange juice has these same chemicals. There are naturally occurring chemicals in fruit, in honey, that mitigate the negative effects of sugar in our body. So sugar causes insulin resistance, but not because of why we think it does. We think sugar causes insulin resistance because it raises your blood sugar. That's not why it happens. There are plenty of cultures all over the world that have 95% of their calories as carbohydrates. They don't get diabetes. Mm. So insulin-induced insulin resistance is not the pathology of carbohydrate. That's not why carbohydrates are bad. Carbohydrates are not bad as a class. It's processing of carbohydrates that strips chemicals that naturally occur with these that our body has always expected that actually prevent overgrowth of bacteria in the gut. And there's plenty of studies that show that if you give a human or you give a mouse pure glucose, pure fructose, or pure sugar, you will get something called endotoxemia, metabolic endotoxemia. Endotoxin is a word it's a, it's a synonym for lipopolysaccharide. Lipopolysaccharide is a component of a bacterial cell wall, a gram-negative bacterial cell wall. So when you feed a human pure sugar, the wrong type of bacteria overgrow, this is dysbiosis, you mess up the gut flora, and that signaling of endotoxin that binds to TLR4, which is toll-like receptor 4, and you get cytokines, TNF-alpha, IL-6, and others, which signal inflammation in the human body, and your body says, whoa, I've got an infection but you don't have an infection, you just ate a bunch of sugar. And that causes you to become insulin resistant due to an inflammatory mechanism. I think seed oils cause insulin resistance at an energy generation mechanism at a mitochondrial electron level, and sugar causes it at an inflammatory level due to dysbiosis in the gut. Those are two major pathways. And again, what have we done here? All I'm saying is don't eat processed food, guys. <laughs> like, Because if you eat single ingredient foods, meat <laughs> and plants, fruits and vegetables and meat, you're not getting seed oils and you're not getting processed sugar. Problem solved. Humans get healthy. Diabetes fixed, obesity fixed, heart disease fixed, cancer mostly fixed. Like, that, that's, that's so easy. But no, Global Energy Balance Network, Sean. Yeah. Just think about calories. Don't think about food quality. You can still do the Coca-Cola. You know, this, wow. is the, this is the problem here. It's, it's all kind of connected, right? And because who gets paid? So yeah, humans, it's easy. And it's not that humans either need to eat rabbit food or food that's not palatable. I mean, I gave you raw steak earlier because the Airbnb grill was garbage. But you know, I could have given you cooked steak, squash, and strawberries. That's not horrible. It's maybe not as dopaminergic and as addicting as a Big Mac or Skittles, but that's hardly depriving yourself of like good tasting food. Yeah. So the, yeah. the answer is really simple. The molecular mechanisms I think are important to explain so that people understand what's going on beneath the surface and why all this happens. But essentially what's happened is that in the last 150 years, all of these foods have come into the human food supply, the American food supply, through the FDA, which really didn't do the right safety trials on them, and now we're just metabolically broken. But the way forward is super simple. We don't need AI vaccines. <laughs> you know, we don't need crazy things. We, we really don't even need GLP-1 antagonists, even though that helps some people. We don't need Ozempic. We just need to stop eating garbage food and return to the foods that humans have always eaten. That's, it's, it's that simple. It's crazy. 